now that I got your attention, as my video intro pointed out, my computer suffered a catastrophic power supply failure. Let's figure out what went wrong with the power supply. From disassembling the power supply, I discovered two components that appeared to have failed. One was an integrated circuit IC501, which had its package top blown off. And the other was capacitor C103, which appears to have a slight bulge to the top of it. I ended up measuring across that capacitor to come to find out that it had an open circuit. To help aid in figuring out what went wrong with the power supply, I created a functional block diagram. The two blocks in yellow are the circuit sections where I had the failed components. The first yellow block contains the power factor correction and boost converter circuitry, while the second yellow block contains the high voltage DC to low voltage DC converter circuitry. This section is for creating the 5 volt standby circuitry for the power supply. I also created a partial schematic based on the component layout that included the C103 electrolytic capacitor. Now for a little circuit explanation leading up to the C103 capacitor. The first section shown in the schematic is the EMI input filter stage. Here you can see it basically contains two common mode chokes, LF1 and LF2, an X capacitor, CX1, and two Y capacitors, CY1 and CY2. The CX and CY capacitors are safety capacitors. Safety capacitors are used in this type of stage because they fail in predictable ways. The CX capacitor is used as an across the line capacitor. And when it fails, it fails as a short circuit allowing fuse F1 to burn open. The CX capacitor is used for differential noise filtering. The CY capacitor is a line to ground capacitor. And when it fails, it fails as an open circuit. The CY capacitors are used with a common mode choke to filter out common mode noise. The CY capacitors are used in this way to prevent the chassis from becoming energized due to a ground fault condition. Besides filtering purposes, the CY capacitors are used to prevent an electrocution hazard. The EMI input filter stage is located on the top of the board in the shaded area. The next stage we are going to look at in the schematic is the transient suppression stage. This is handled by varistor VZ1. A varistor is an electronic component with a nonlinear varying resistance that is dependent on the voltage applied across it. Essentially it acts like a voltage dependent resistor. Varistors are available with different voltage thresholds. When they are exposed to voltages below their thresholds, they act like a high impedance to the source that they are connected to. As the varistor's voltage threshold is exceeded, its impedance will sharply decrease to a low value. The varistor is used to protect circuitry from large transient voltages. As can be seen in this picture, the varistor is located in the top right hand corner of the circuit board. The full wave rectification stage takes the absolute value of the input signal fed to it. If the input signal is time varying, its frequency will be doubled at the output of the bridge rectifier, which in the case of this power supply is 120 Hz, since it's used in the United States, where we have a line frequency of 60 Hz. The bridge rectifier will reduce the input signal's amplitude by two diode drops or approximately 1.4 volts. In this image, the bridge rectifier is located in the top right hand corner of the circuit board. The last stage we will be looking at is the boost converter stage. The boost converter stage takes an input voltage 
and boosts it to a much higher level. The primary components that make up the boost converter stage are inductor L101, MOSFETs Q601 and Q602, capacitor C103, and ICU201. ICU201 is the gate drive for transistors Q601 and Q602. The purpose of the transistors Q601 and Q602 is to connect inductor L101 across the output of the bridge rectifier. This allows inductor L101 to store energy in a magnetic field. Once transistors Q601 and Q602 are turned off, the inductor becomes additive to the output of the bridge rectifier, hence the boost voltage created. This voltage is then stored on capacitor C103. The boost converter circuit in this type of power supply is generally designed to produce an output voltage of approximately 400 volts DC. If you remember back earlier in this video, we discovered that the capacitor C103 was rated for 400 volts. If the boost converter in this power supply was designed to produce approximately 400 volts, then this is an issue. It would appear that whoever designed this power supply made one critical flaw. When they chose this capacitor for the output stage, they improperly sized the capacitor for operating voltage and most likely was the reason for the capacitor failing. The boost converter circuitry is located on the right side of the PC board that is shown in the shaded area. Shown in the next shaded area on the circuit board are some of the components that make up the 5 volt standby circuitry. I did not draw the schematic for this section, which would have been tedious, so I took an application schematic out of the datasheet for the TNY part for illustrative purposes. If you look closely, the TNY part is connected directly across C2, which is the rectified and filtered voltage from the AC line. This power supply is known as an offline switcher, and this topology is well suited for creating the 5 volt standby voltage. Remember failed capacitor C103? This capacitor fed the 5 volt standby circuit. It was probably the root cause of why this chip blew. You can see and understand how one design flaw can cause a cascade of failures within a design. This next part of the video shows what I did to get the power supply working again. I then proceeded by procuring the TNY278P I see off eBay with free shipping. I didn't want to buy a replacement for the 330 microfarad capacitor until I was sure there was nothing else wrong with the power supply. Instead, I took four 100 microfarad capacitors that I already have in my component inventory and wired them in parallel to form a capacitor bank. I verified my capacitor bank by measuring it with my LCR meter. The capacitor bank gave a reading of 360 microfarads. Next, I installed IC501 and the temporary capacitor bank. After applying AC power to the power supply, it appeared that a high voltage DC of 385 volts was being developed across the capacitor bank, and the power supply was regulating at 5 volts DC. Now that it appears that the power supply is fully functioning, I went and purchased the proper capacitor and sized it for the proper voltage of 450 volts. After I installed the capacitor on the board, I tested each output on the power supply under load. The power supply has now been restored to normal functionality and is producing the right output voltages. I believe a little more discussion on the electrolytic capacitor that failed is in order. The electrolytic capacitor was obviously underrated for the task, even though the boost converter was putting out 385 volts. The way the electrolytic capacitor failed is indicative of being exposed to an over voltage event such as a transient. Since the boost converter was putting out 385 volts, 
and the capacitor is designed for 400 volts, it must have saw something greater than 400 volts as a transient. Once a capacitor is exposed to a voltage higher than what it's rated for, its electrodes short internally, causing current to flow. As the current flows, the electrical light heats up inside the capacitor, causing the capacitor to bulge and eventually leak the electrolyte. The capacitor did show signs of bulging here and leads me to believe this is what ended up happening with the capacitor. This is why you should never run a capacitor at or very close to its maximum operating voltage.